Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell, and this is part three of my Carolina Bays and the Okefenokee Swamp and End to the Means presentation. Um, I just felt like that there was a lot to be to be shown here, a lot to talk about, uh, and I wanted to go ahead and extend this series into a few more videos. Uh, so I hope that's okay, and uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Um, okay, so I left off uh, in part two, you know, we were looking at the LIDAR, we were looking at the Okefenokee Swamp, um, and interestingly enough, you know, I, I, I feel like some of this um, may actually be better represented without the LIDAR, <laughs> you know, and I know it's a very, you know, groundbreaking, useful uh, tool. Uh, we've used it quite a bit here, uh, but to, to actually see what's going on here, I think we need to click off of it, uh, or at least to be able to compare the two. So, so I'm going to do that today. Um, and I'm actually going to start off uh, up here around the uh, Willacoochee area. Let me go ahead and turn on my borders. Uh, here's Willacoochee. And the reason why I want to start here is because we have a very interesting uh, scenario where uh, we have two great drainage divides uh, in this area. Uh, any water that's coming in this direction is going to go down the Satilla River. Any water that's coming down this way is going to go down this um, uh, the Alapaha River. Um, and so we, we have a very unique situation where uh, the Okefenokee, you know, isn't getting water from very many places. Now, at one time it may have, um, but uh, really within the, the past 10,000 years or so, you know, any water that enters the Okefenokee is probably coming from local precipitation. Um, and I, we mentioned in the last video that there are only two drainages of the Okefenokee. So the water that ends up here ends up staying here for quite a while. And um, so I wanted to start here in the Willacoochee area. And, uh, and again, you could see this very easily. We could see all these Carolina Bays. But let me go ahead and click off the LIDAR. And then we're going to uh, kind of track towards the east, uh, southeast, uh, into the Okefenokee Swamp and see if we can see where this water is going and, um, uh, you know, if that story can be told here. And, again, here's these Carolina Bays that we talk about. Um, and uh, keep in mind that, you know, if this event happened, like I'm saying that happened, where a uh, you know a fragment of a of a comet came in and hit the Laurentide ice sheet and just covered the east coast um, in glacial ice, uh, all of that ice had to have melted. Um, you you add on the torrential rainfall that would have happened at the onset of the Younger Dryas, and uh, and we would have had just just unimaginable amounts of water flowing off of the continent here, um, and most of that water is going to flow down these major river channels that we talk about here, like the, um, like the Altamaha to the north of the area that I'm discussing. Again, this is a huge area um, showing this water just, just, just scouring and, 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 you know, all on its way out to the, uh, to the coast. Uh, but in this area, it got stuck. It got stayed. We have Trader Hill, uh, not Trader Hill, but uh, Trail Ridge uh, all through here. And, um, it kept this water in this area. So let's go ahead and uh, just zoom in and we can start kind of tracking our way. And, and this whole area um, is all pretty swampy anyways. We're not quite into the Okefenokee yet, uh, but it's still all very swampy. Um, here's Homerville. Um, some of you that are in the southeast, you may recognize some of these areas. Uh, Waycross is over here. Valdosta is over here. I used to go to school in Valdosta. And uh, it's interesting because I live down here in this area, and we would have to drive all the way around the Okefenokee Swamp to get to school uh, in Valdosta. So we'd have to drive up to Waycross and then back down to Valdosta. And so it's, it's you know, interesting that I'm now talking about this. Uh, but I want, you to, I want you to focus in on this area right here. You can actually see a good bit of difference uh, all south of Waycross here. And when I get closer, you can actually start to see very unique uh, river channels, uh, or at least... Um, drainage flow, uh, as well as a ton of these Carolina Bay-shaped pock marks everywhere. They're all over the place down here. Um, and again, these right now, these are all just swamps. But you could tell by looking at them that there was a flow here at some point. I don't know how long that flow lasted. Um, I, I don't imagine it was too terribly long, but it has been like this ever since. And uh, we can see we've got all of these pop marks. Uh, there was a ton of action going on here uh, if the event happened, like I say it does. And um, we could just keep following these along. Uh, you know, all these just, just very strange braided river uh, or water flow action. 
Um, this braiding is going to become very important. I think uh, we're going to talk more about that, you know, because this is just fluvial geology. You know, this is this is basic, basic geology, you know, or at least hydrology. Uh, and we could follow these back, you know, all the way into the swamp. We can see here we're actually getting into the swamp now. Um, and if I zoom out just a little bit more, again, we just followed this whole path into the Okefenokee Swamp. Um, here is that trail ridge again, and all of this area just got stuck. It's, it's a neat little spot right here. You can actually see where water flowed into the swamp in this direction, uh, created a delta at some point. Uh, but even then, we've got just these Carolina Bay uh, markings everywhere. Um, so now we're in like a, the, the deep part of the swamp. You know, this is, uh, and you can actually, if I zoom back out again, and let me go and click off of these uh, borders and labels so we can see it better. But, you know, you can actually see where it just looks like there's just like a mass swirling of, of muck. You know, this, this wouldn't have been good. Uh, and then it's just stayed and it's been this way ever since. Um, there are lots of uh, ponds that we see here, and these ponds are interestingly shaped. Here's a couple good examples. Um, this is, let me turn these back on. This is uh, uh, Buzzard's Roost Lake. Uh, and again, very Carolina Bay shaped. It probably started off as a Carolina Bay. Uh, and then all of this water. Now, all of these, um, these aren't holes. These are actually raised peat bogs uh, that we see in this whole area. But so we're looking at very wet conditions in these areas. Uh, here's Monkey Lake. I actually went uh, camping here one time, uh, right here on this platform. Um, pretty interesting. But uh, anyways, yeah, you can actually see that there is just uh, a lot of water just sitting here now. And this water's been here for, you know, at least 7,000 years. You know, the, the oldest peat has been dated back to 7,000 years. Um, again, I think that this could be older. Uh, I think we could probably find older peat, maybe around eight, uh, at least at the end of end of the uh, last, uh, I'm sorry, at the end of the Younger Dryas, uh, when conditions started to warm back up. Um, so, anyways, I just wanted to do that. I wanted to show you, um, you know, just the flow without the lidar on. Sometimes, you know, the lidar has been very, very helpful, but in this case, uh, the lidar is, is a little bit distracting. You know, if I click back on it, you can see uh, this area just is a giant blob of pink and it makes it very difficult to to see these trails of water that i was just showing you um so being able to use google earth without it or with it uh you know is, is definitely and, and i've said before that you know i think that these stories here uh we just have to learn how to read it and uh this is what we're trying to do what i'm trying to do uh, now in my next video i'm actually going to uh we're going to be tracking the uh the water flowing out of the Okefenokee to the south, uh, southeast, I should say. Uh, again, here's the Suwannee River where it's draining out, but I want to focus on uh, this area right here. Uh, we're going to look at the birth of the St. Mary's River um, and going to get into a little bit more too because I want to I want to focus and, and watch, you know, track this water. You can actually see how narrow um, this drainage is, but it still had a lot of water coming through it. And this area, this is actually the county that I live in in Georgia. And uh, we could see here where the Satilla River and the St. Mary's River met. And it's, it's quite amazing. You could see this braiding that I mentioned before. Um, and this is dry land. I mean, this is, this is where people live. Uh, here's Kingsland, Georgia. Here's Woodbine, Georgia. So the whole area between Kingsland and Woodbine. Again, this is where I live, where I grew up. Uh, and... We can see that, uh, you know, there's a lot going on in this area if you know how to read it. Um, and so <laughs> that's where I'm going to go to next, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. And, um, you know, keep your eyes out. Like I said, I, I want to put out at least one more video, maybe a couple more. Uh, I hope this is helpful. And um, let me know if you, uh, if you need me, to, if you want me to cover anything specific. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.